Hey guys, welcome back to the Fitting Podcast. Today we have the power couple, Nina Fashik, also known as Muslim Mindset, and Ali Abdo, ex-Olympic wrestler for Australia. They got to speak on their couple and their relationship and how they both thrive to achieve their goals. We got to speak about their marriage mentorship. We got to speak on how a Muslim should strive in a career, in a deen, in a family, in her goals. So many interesting topics. You guys are going to absolutely love this episode. Nina, mashallah, is a gun. Um, we hope you guys enjoy the episode. Remember to like, comment and subscribe and enjoy. All in there's something that I can use, not so much for the fame. Do you know what I mean? If, if, if my focus starts to be on fame, uh, I'm, in, I'm in deep water here, mm-hmm. right? And subhanAllah, even at that, all it takes for the person that actually falls into this, don't despair because all you need to do is repent and refocus, realign, okay? Because subhanAllah... One of the vices that's constantly working against us, other than this nafs, uh, nafs al-amara that we have within us, the other vice is, uh, you know, the, the devils. So obviously, if you got married nearly 10 years ago, um, did Ali's journey affect you in any way? Like with maybe him saying, you know, I, I wanted these goals and I achieved it, you can too? Did like Ali inspire you to, not inspire you, but encourage you to chase yeah. your dreams as well? Yeah, I think Ali's inspired me a lot without him realising. Yeah, he's been very supportive of everything that I've done so far, alhamdulillah. Um, you know, some things I think we've had to adjust along the way because you're going to try to, f- you know, find your feet, especially having a young family. Um, but alhamdulillah, no, mashallah, he's actually, with, with his achievements, it's absolutely inspirational. And I'm like, I'm his biggest fan. <laughs> I'm his biggest fan. Yes, you have to be. You have to be the support. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. If you, if you go home and the person doesn't support you there, it's like that's your other half. Absolutely yeah. right. How about um, early on? Because obviously, we'll, I think we'll just touch on shortly your story, mm-hmm. just so people get to understand how you became Muslimer mindset. Um, but more, then we'll touch on more like the questions you want to ask and yeah. the philosophy and mindset you have on a lot of things, but. How did you go from just studying Islamic knowledge? I think you studied in, with Sheikh Shadi in Sydney. Yes. And then from there to becoming the Muslim mindset, what was the step to be like, I want to go spread knowledge? Uh, from learning the knowledge to be like, okay, now I think there's a gap in the community yeah. to be able to yeah. uh, spread what I've learned, my experiences and stuff like yeah. that. So I, I think the seed was planted with me when I first started uh, to seek Islamic knowledge. Because what we know is that, you know, uh, once you have the knowledge, you also have, you know, almost an obligation to be spreading it, to be teaching it, right? So we know that on Judgment Day, I know on Judgment Day, I'm going to be asked what I did with my Islamic knowledge. And so for me, there's always been almost this, I guess, this weight on my shoulders to say, okay, Nina, one day, what are you you going to do with this? What are you going to do with all of it? Like I literally fell in love. I went on this long journey, alhamdulillah, with with Islamic knowledge. And I know it's all a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But by the end of the day, I also know that I need to be putting it out there. And along the way, I've had like, you know, teachers or shuk that have kind of almost been like mentors that would like, you know, uh, get in contact every now and again. Like for instance, when um, after I had had my first child, Bilal, um, one of my teachers from Sydney, Sheikh Arif Sheikhid, he got in contact with me. Just sent me a text saying, "Where are you at with your studies? Pull your socks up. When are you gonna When are you gonna finish that degree? Right?" And I'm like, "That's exactly what I needed at the time, because." Where my mindset was, was that I'm, oh my God, I'm drowning at the moment. How am I even going to, maybe that can just take a back seat forever. Mm. I may not have ever pursued that, you know, had he not been like, okay, Nina. So I literally had to fix my mindset up going, hold on a second. Remember why you've learned all this anyway, subhanAllah. Mm. And so uh, going down that track, um, we had three children, uh, pretty much one after the other. Right, because we got married a little bit later in life, and Subhanallah, uh, what really prompted me to start the Muslim mindset was a health scare. Okay, it was a health scare. Subhanallah, I had um, we had discovered that I had a large tumor in my liver, and for me, I just went, "Oh wow, is this how I'm going to get taken out? Like, is this is this the beginning of the end type of a thing?" Right? Alhamdulillah, so far that's been fine. It hasn't been an issue, but it really. Uh, helped me see this whole uh, world in the limited time that we have. It's allowed me to place that in perspective and go, okay, well, you know what, just take that step. And that's why I literally did. I went and I um, got myself a mentor 
And I had this mentor for probably about uh, four weeks. And within those four weeks, I had realised that I learned a very valuable lesson. And this was through uh, running a charity campaign, right? It was put forward to me to uh, build a masjid in a third world country. And for me, I'm like, okay, this is great. This is actually part of my, it's in my bucket list. This is one thing I've always wanted to do, build a masjid in a third world country. And I thought to myself, how in the world am I going to raise $10,000 to get, I'm not the type of person to go and ask people for money, hey, collecting charity, whatnot, right? So then subhanAllah, I made the intention I put it out there and within two weeks, I didn't have $10,000 for a masjid. I had $25,000 for a large masjid. And through that was such an an immense lesson for me, subhanAllah. You make the intention and you step, take that step and Allah will facilitate things for you. And so for me, I just went, okay, like, all right, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready to do this. So I literally went, brainstormed a whole bunch of names and I came up with the Muslim mindset because my whole aim and my intention uh, is targeting the Muslim woman, right? SubhanAllah. And so, um, and then off I, off I went, literally started with establishing an Instagram page, uh, putting out some uh, Islamic uh, quotes, Islamic knowledge, and then, you know, kind of went from there. You know, I started to run workshops. Um, I started to, I, I, I had done a women's only conference, which was amazing. The feedback was amazing. Inshallah, we're going to have one soon in the next few months. Um, and it's just kind of just uh, exploded. Like, you know, within, within a, a year, I literally managed to get, um, I think it was over, within the year I got, uh, you know, 12,000 followers and all of a sudden I'm invited everywhere. Um, and subhanAllah, and yeah. like this is the work of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, I really, I can't give myself credit for that. Mm-hmm. This was my intention, but he literally facilitated it all. And I'm very grateful for that. Very, very grateful for it, subhanAllah. Yeah, yeah so I, think, I think that there was a, actually a lot of points I wanted to break down. Yeah. Uh, the first thing you noted was when you were studying, you were thinking, mm-hmm. obviously, like, I have to spread this knowledge. And I think a lot of us maybe now because social media we have a mindset where we want to learn to teach yeah and our intention isn't for the pleasure of allah you know to get closer to allah mm-hmm. a lot of times we have to fight that intention like i want to spread this knowledge to maybe sound religious look religious mm-hmm. get more popular um, i know you had a gap between your studies and actually posting so it's probably much easier for you mm-hmm. um, but what do you say to you know, a lot of people that when they are studying, that's their thought. Like, I, I want to learn something so I can spread it straight away yeah. to get those. Well, I'm, I'm still learning. I'm still a student of knowledge. I'm currently um, uh, trying to complete my master's of Islamic studies. And I, can t- I have the intention to continuously study. And the thing is, for me, I want to die as a student of knowledge. I would love that, right? And I'm not perfect, right? But the idea is that um, when you learn something, and you put it out there with the intention that I'm going to benefit others. I'm going to I have the expectation that I'm going to get a reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Y- you're onto it. There is nothing wrong with this. The issue is when your ego gets involved. This nafs, right? That we need to constantly discipline, subhanAllah. And that uh, because the riya, riya is actually a d- disease of the heart. It's ostentation, right? And this is incredibly damaging. This actually falls into shirk, a major sin or the major sin, right? SubhanAllah. And that is associating partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm not here trying to gain the fame. The fame will likely be a byproduct of it. But SubhanAllah, when you look when you look back at like the great scholars and how they would literally run away from fame, even this scares you. Because the reality of the nafs and this nafs al-amara, so it's going to keep popping up, keep trying to keep trying to get you to go, oh, this, fa- this feels fantastic, right? And it's up to the believer to constantly, you know, rectify this intention. And you have to continuously do it because the scholars, when they speak about even the, the, the nature of the heart and how it, um, it turns over an intention, they liken it to boiling water. This is how often your intentions turn around. So when you think about boiling water and how often this intention is, is changing in your heart, how often do you need to slap yourself back into line? You know? Is that something you're consciously thinking of? Like, I'd love to benefit the community but not get too famous or popular for yeah. something? Because yeah. obviously with social media, you yeah. can't control one video making you go from 10 to 100K followers yeah. or whatever it is. Is yeah. that something you're conscious right. of? It's like, I don't want to get mm. so popular that my kids at school or the 
they always hear, oh my God, that's, you know, Muslim mindset's daughter yeah, or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, my focus tends to stay on where can I get the biggest impact, right? And so for social, social media, the way that I view it, I view it as a tool and I view it as a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If I didn't have social media, I would likely be in small halakha groups where my impact would be likely about 10 women. So I've now moved from 10 women to potentially 3,000 women in one hit or 25,000 women in one hit. And for me, I look at that like this is a tool and it's something that I can use, not so much for the fame. Do you know what I mean? If, if, if my focus starts to be on fame, uh, I'm, in, I'm in deep water here, right? And subhanAllah, even at that, all it takes for the person that actually falls into this, don't despair because all you need to do is repent and refocus, realign, okay? Because subhanAllah, one of the vices that's constantly working against us, other than this nafs, uh, nafs al-amara that we have within us, the other vice is, uh, you know, the, the devils. They don't stop, right? We're nothing new to them. I'm nothing unique to them. They've seen me thousands and thousands of times. They know how to hook you in, right? And subhanAllah. So the idea is that constantly trying to have this link with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seek refuge in Him. I can't do it on my own. I can't. I can't go up against them on my own. It can't happen. SubhanAllah. And there's a, uh, one of the sayings of um, Imam Al-Ghazali. He teaches us that, you know, when uh, the believer, they uh, recognize the waswasa. They recognize the waswasa. And then SubhanAllah, uh, they seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the moment that this believer seeks refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expels these devils. And then he has mercy on this servant. And you think this all happens all because you were mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you literally called out for him for help, mm. right? Yeah. Allah. Um, I wanted to touch on now Ali because, you know, sometimes with, um, at least in, like I know with young people getting married, one thing I speak about is like not wanting my wife to be in the public eye. And Allah, Allah, maybe that's an insecurity. Maybe that's something that I need to work on. And maybe we can touch on that when we chat more about um, uh, marriage. Uh, but the idea where, like, the guy, like, for example, me, I have a podcast. But then my wife's like, no, 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 maybe you shouldn't have social media. Ha what's your thoughts and perspective on, like, your wife? Obviously, she's doing it in the right way. It's not like, you know, some sisters are popular because they're just posting pictures of themselves in a certain way. But your wife's obviously spreading knowledge, and that's why she's popular. Um What's your thoughts on that? Like your wife being active on social media? Is this a hard thing for you to accept? Look, I... Uh, I've, good question. Because I... Me personally, I don't like social media. Yeah. Um, it comes with good. But it comes with bad, yeah. Um, so for me, I guess it was... Like... Uh, we're, we're trying to be... Of people, like people of value. You know, do good. Uh, so for me, it was like, at first, I guess I had to wrestle with the idea, <laughs> you know, um, but I had to kind of just keep, you know, tell, you know, just keep saying that you know, the whole purpose is to, you know, she has the knowledge, she's trying to spread the knowledge, because it's no good kind of obtaining knowledge and keeping it within yourself, yeah, so, you know, I mean, yeah, for me, social media is... <laughs> Yeah, I haven't. I'm not a big fan of it personally. I'm quite old school, you know. Um, even with the the things that I do at the moment, like I'm not very active. Um, but uh, let me ask: because of that, do you keep up to date with your wife's content, or do you kind of just let her do her thing? No, no. I, I like obviously no, no. I, I kind of I, I come across it. I you know, watch it. Um, you know, I, like I said, I'm not I'm not very heavy on the social media. So I'm not there always just, you know, yeah. scrolling and looking out for the next post, or, you know what I mean? Yeah. But uh, look, I think it, trust is a big thing, yeah? So alhamdulillah, I think that uh, that gives you, um, uh, you know, uh, more comfort. Uh, and mashallah, she's wise enough. She uses it for the right reasons. You know, she's, uh, you know, like like you mentioned earlier, you know, if you know, you've got people there trying to gather followers because they're always posting themselves or, Posting every little thing they do throughout the day, you know, I'm not for that. 
it's a very you important know. thing for like being well known is one thing, but it's why you're well known. Yeah, that's you right. Know, like if you're like Sheikh Bilal and you're well known, it's it's only khair. It's only khair. That's exactly. But if you're right. like someone else, you know what I mean, like yeah. some singer, and you're in the community, it's not a benefit. And this is, and this is the discussion because I told I told them, you know, that this is the the field you're in is much needed, and there's no one within this domain, especially even within Melbourne. Not yeah? even a, a, Australia, even like, probably. But even like. Overseas no, I there, know there's a yeah, lot of brothers there's, there's, That do it But not sisters The sisters you can count them On probably one hand Yeah mm-hmm. Yeah You know But mashallah And there's some sisters That you Like The ones that are There's a few that are doing it And mashallah They're, they're very well respected Because they're very well presented mm. Like they They, they safe, safeguard themselves They All they're doing Is sharing knowledge um, Not trying to drum up followers By doing Trivial stuff S- Trivial yeah, stuff yeah. Or I'm fu- not, uh, things that can get views It's not yeah, for views yeah, You can see exactly. it Exactly I'm not like For me I guess I've got a lot of Say IP When it comes to Say wrestling Or even within my Osteopathy field For me I have to be On social media For that I don't do it I'm still programmed mm. I, I'm kind of A bit ancient When it comes to that I have to break that barrier mm. And that's you know um, But look I think my wife's got the The gift When she's presenting um, and I think she's doing a great job, um, as long as you know we're always keeping our intention in check, because we're always going to be challenged. Yeah. Um, I think that's that's the key. You know? How about for your wife, like going to events? Yep. Obviously, she gets uh, requested maybe to go to a mosque. Some mo- maybe majority are sisters only events. I'm not too sure exactly. That's the whole purpose of her okay. brand. It's a I sisters. It's a it's a it's for the sisters. You know what I mean? Yeah. And we're just gonna. Yeah, so... Um, Which is better it though? Was, it, subhanAllah, well, that's the thing. I remember when we, um, when I was actually building the Muslim mindset, I would consult Ali a lot within it, and then subhanAllah, I, I landed on the Muslim mindset, right? Because I aimed at Muslim women, mm-hmm. and I am aiming at youth as well. But um, subhanAllah, you know, I've had uh, recently a lot of imams actually say, why don't you change it to the Muslim mindset? Because you're, uh, you're, you're very appealing, your content's very appealing to both genders. And subhanAllah, it kind of goes against what we, in, we were initially comfortable with, subhanAllah. But look, I, I do get a, invited to do a lot of mixed events. Um, I do them occasionally. I'm very selective of what I take. Um, but at the same time, I also like to voice that, you know, it's, it's not something that, I kind of want to be doing. I kind of just feel like um, because there's the benefit there, I know my husband gets a little bit uncomfortable with it and so then that makes me feel uncomfortable to do it, if that makes sense. I think there's enough um, individuals, like even a lot of the sheikhs that go around giving speeches, Mm -hmm. a lot of times they touch on like perseverance or even mindset for even from the Islamic perspective and then we have the comfortability to ask questions mm-hmm. like specific to males yeah. and sisters need that opportunity as much as they can for sisters only events it's just comfortability Absolutely. it's to look at someone and be like she's one of us yeah. and if you th- if every time there's an event if a mu- if there's a male speaker it's not yeah. the same yeah um on the muslim mindset uh have you read the book firstly the yeah. There's the ideal Muslim, ideal Muslim. Oh, those ones. Yes, yes, absolutely. Okay. Yes, maybe in we'll my library at home. <laughs> What's your thoughts yeah, on sure um, maybe either of those if you've read? Or like, uh, yeah. You know, honestly, uh, it's, I probably read them about 15 years ago. Okay. Yeah. Long time ago. Probably about long, yeah. long, long time That's ago. That's fine. Long, yeah. long time ago. So what I, I try to appeal to, um, I, I don't like to say this, but, you know, the, the modern woman, you know, our, our, our kind of day woman, subhanAllah, mm. and that I like to show people women that I myself am not perfect. I come with my own struggles. I have my own struggles, right? But that doesn't mean that we don't try to strive and live with this ihsan. And a lot of women don't even know what ihsan is, right? SubhanAllah, you know, it's to, to lead a life where you are mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the extent where you know he is watching you, right? SubhanAllah. So um, that's my whole aim and that is my intention, inshallah, moving forward. Yeah. I think because um, obviously with any book, there's good, bad, depending on when you read it in your time of life. Yeah. But the ideal Muslim was written by a male. Mm. That's one thing that's like even just interesting. Like, there's th- not a problem with that. There's yeah. a lot of books um, that can be written uh, in that kind of way. But just that idea, it's like if a sister could write that book, maybe it would be an uh, interesting uh, read. A absolutely. lot of young people, absolutely. Absolutely. maybe that can be further down in the journey. Yes, absolutely. Okay, uh, I'd love to touch on the Muslim mindset. So, when you think of Muslim mindset There's so many different things You want to teach mm-hmm. When you go to uh, Islamic societies Or conferences Or events They ask you Do they allow you To uh, pick a topic Or do you 
uh, they pick a topic for you? Um, no, they allow me to pick topics, but they also, uh, sometimes I'm open to su- suggestions and so they would, um, put forward a few ideas and yeah, okay. kind of run with it. I just want, yeah. uh, okay, that's interesting to know. Yeah. Um, what are the main, um, like, do you normally have like a topic that you kind of repeat depending on the, um, age group? Like, is there specific principles um, or, uh, mindsets that you like to teach or yeah. does it always change? Yeah. So, uh the crux of literally what I teach and I try to reinforce it in every single, um, you know, lesson that I would uh, facil- facilitate uh, would be uh, to live with this ihsan, to be mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your daily actions, in every single intention, right? The way that we are built as human beings, you know, we all wear very different hats and everyone's life is very different to the next person. But, you know, uh, just as you can earn your jannah, I can earn my jannah, right? And it doesn't mean that 90% of my day needs to be in worship, like as in, in salah, for instance, okay? In that through my intentions, I can literally earn my jannah, right? Through the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of course. How about when, because now you're looking at it and... You, the Ihsan principle mm-hmm. You want to strive for excellence in everything you do yep. But the real question That a lot of maybe will say young females Have to ask themselves like, What is it that I should be doing mm-hmm. To then strive for excellence in yep. Is it Because even the career There's a lot of mindset It's like you can There's a lot of sisters that Like may Allah uh, Reward their families They allow them to study mm-hmm. But then when they finish studying They don't allow them to work and that's a, that's a thing that like they get married and they're like no there's no need for you to work yeah. your husband can provide for you yeah. and then there's a lot of times where even studying Islamic studies is not made easy for them yeah, yeah. you know leaving the house working yeah. uh, marrying outside the culture yeah. when you push these sisters to strive for excellence are you also telling them to they should be you know striving for their goals is a career yeah. what's the balanced approach that you kind of give for them it comes down to the individual sister I mean look subhanallah um I really am a big believer that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, facilitates everything in our life. All of our opportunities are given to us by him. Nothing's haphazard, nothing in our day, subhanAllah. And what we find is that, you know, I think a, little, a lot of sisters are just looking for one particular path. But the truth is that you can literally go off and find any, um, any particular career that is halal, that is halal for you to do, right? You have this career... And that you are mindfully pursuing this, wanting to be this Khalifa that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, talks about in the Quran, right? He tells the angels, Inni ja'ilun fil ardi Khalifa, right? I'm going to place a vicegerency on this earth. So this is a role that us, us Muslims, we need to be playing here on this earth, right? And subhanAllah, I think I believe it comes back to this. Because when you look at the definition or one of the definitions of Khalifa, it's to be um, uh, to represent Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy on this earth. So you can do this by simply being a daughter, by being a neighbor, by you know um, giving people their rights, giving the animals their rights, giving the environment their rights. So there's not one particular path. It's about your life. What do you enjoy doing? What what do you feel is kind of calling you? You know, in terms of your career, in terms of your studies, Subhanallah. So there's so many different avenues, um, and you know you can attain ihsan in all of it, provided that it's halal. Provided that it's within the boundaries of the Sharia, right? And we, I remind you that you know the the Sharia is all based upon pillars that are there to uh, protect the individual, protect the society, protect the community, protect you know um, the economy, protect the environment. Subhanallah. Mm-hmm. How about for sisters? Like, because I think one thing you're pushing as well is to get like a basic foundation in Islamic studies. That's something you've been pushing. Is that a mindset? Uh, like yes, absolutely. absolutely yeah. um, where and how should sisters derive the innate value from? Because sometimes it, the value is judged on the external. Mm-hmm. You know, like if someone thinks I'm good at something, then that means I'm good at it. You know, and or my family, my family's perspectives and um, idea of what my strengths are is who I am. Mm-hmm. But then when you can derive it from internally, the external world can't affect it. So how do you try to, or how do you? Push uh, a mindset for sisters to derive their value from Because those titles like I'm a good mother yep. And yep. a mothers fight that a lot It's like am I a good or bad mum so yeah. How would you push that mindset? Yeah. So just touching on self-worth When you dive into the Islamic sciences we, We've very quickly made aware of the fact that 
we have these vices working against us. You've got this shiotin that don't stop. Like I mentioned before, you know, it, it, we're nothing new to them. Nina's nothing new to them. They've seen me countless times. They have the capacity to run through someone's veins, right? And their primary goal is to make, to pretty much de debilitate you through anxiety, depression. Look at self-worth these days. Look at how much of an epidemic it is, right? SubhanAllah. So I believe that, you know, when it comes down to... Um, really uh, trying to see where your worth is at, the only place you will really find it that is haq, that is truth, is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Being a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, being the, crea the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and taking a look at the status that he's given us believers, right? So when a woman can honour this within herself, she will fly in every single direction in her life. Let it be career, let it be relationships, Right, to panel in every single direction in her life. How about um, within the household? Because a lot of times, it's um, when you get married. There's a there's an ego side to things. Like as a man, it's like I I I'm not gonna cook. Or when uh, males, you know, like we have kids for the, have kids on the way. It's like I'm never gonna change the diapers. My dad never did that. Yeah. And you just hear these some statements. That you're like. How can you even think like that? But that's a lot of the mindsets that yeah. maybe even sisters like, oh, I used to always cook and clean at home because my brothers never did anything. When I get to my new house, I'm not going to do anything. Yeah. And you might hear that quite often. I'm not yeah. too sure. Uh, what's, do you kind of speak to people when they're trying to develop this mindset with going into getting married? Yep. Like this, the ego that was like, no, I don't want to do that. Yep. And then also the ability to sacrifice for the greater good for your family and stuff yes, like that. Absolutely. And you know, all, always comes back to your purpose. Why are you here? What are you truly living for? If you ask yourself this question, really, what am I truly living for? And for the believer, we know that uh, death in this world is not the end. It's really only the beginning, subhanAllah, of, of a very, very long journey, subhanAllah. And once, I believe, once a, a Muslim or a Muslimer um, can really come to terms with this, with certainty, I believe their whole mindset will change. Because subhanAllah, you know, uh, mindset, as it, when we look at the definition of a mindset, it is uh, the beliefs that govern your thinking. So if me as a believer, if I know that, hey, I'm going to be accountable, hey, I'm here for a little limited time, and whatever I do in this time is literally going to determine what comes after it, I'm really going to pull my socks up, mm -hmm. Right? Because by the end of the day, it's only me. I'm the one that's going to be accountable. And so that's gonna, that belief is going to govern my thinking. So now, when I look at housework, for instance, when I look at you know taking care of my husband or taking care of my children, for me, this is now going, okay, this is charity. This is considered charity. This is going into my ekhara, hasana bank. You know what I mean? So it, it all comes back to that. I believe it's really refining that belief and solidifying this belief in your mind. And to panelize believers, we all need the, these reminders. We all need these reminders. Is that a thing of gender roles that you kind of uh, get a lot of questions about? Because I know a lot of your audience is young sisters when you go to Islamic societies, when you go to a lot of your events. Is that a big um, question for a lot of them? Like um, no, not necessarily. No, no, okay. no. I, right. um, how, yeah. how about sisters like role models because sometimes us guys like like speaking with Ali before when you're when you're multifaceted when you have multiple different interests it's yeah. sometimes hard to find the role model that um has the same mindset as you it's like yeah. a lot of times they might have the islamic but they don't have the they'll be overweight yeah. and it's like oh i don't take my health from him or then he has a good mindset but then he's yeah. something else you know his family you know he doesn't have a family he's not married it's like it's hard to find someone that is so similar to you Absolutely. when sisters say um who should I look up to as role models? What's the answers you give? Yep. So, look, I, I don't actually get that. I don't get that. Who should I look up to as a role model? I get sisters, mashallah, that actually see me as a role model, which flatters me completely, and it's, it's, actually, it's a beautiful thing. But when we look at role models these days, I don't believe anyone will really fit the bill because you're going to take something from uh, Fatma, you'll take something from uh, Khadija, you'll take something from, you know, Asya, you'll take something from everyone. And subhanAllah, like, you know, everyone is so unique in what their, expect what their expectations are of, you know, the good life and, and, and whatnot, subhanAllah. So um, I believe myself, um, and this is why I don't have, you know, one solid mentor, is that I believe that I can literally learn off so many different women 
and I take the good of so many different women. You know, it doesn't need, I don't need to limit myself. Why would I limit myself to one role model? You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. How important is having a mentor? Um, I believe it is important, but I don't believe it's uh, the be end and end all. You know, uh, subhanAllah. I just, um, I think for starting out, a mentor is really great, really helpful, especially when you want to figure out where you want to go. Um, and then once you kind of are taking those steps on your road, subhanAllah, you know, you, your, your mentors will kind of change and you don't necessarily have to even call them mentors. You know, there could be people that you just check in every now and again for advice. You know what I mean? These people with wisdom. And, you know, one thing that I really do like to um, champion is, you know, there's a two, there's a two part process. It's, it's a framework um, that everyone should be using when it comes to seeking advice. And that is one, uh, istikhara, that is seeking uh, the counsel of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then it's istishara. And that is uh, going and asking those people that you think may know, these people of wisdom, right, to, to gain that kind of advice. And subhanAllah, it will differ from person to person. So I don't necessarily believe in going just to one, one person, one mentor, yeah, that's that's not for me. <laughs> no. Yeah. And in terms of that, like you looking out for different people, because I admire that a lot. Okay. Um, even for myself, I don't really look for one specific person because it's not realistic as well. Mm. For so, for example, someone can look at me for one aspect, but then not for all because maybe I don't have it all for what they're looking for. Um, how is it for you in terms of balancing these things in your life? So, if, let's say, for example, career and then with family and health. How is it with you balancing? And how do you work towards getting the right amount? Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm not, we spoke about this earlier, I'm not a fan of the word balance, just like Ali, subhanAllah, because I find like, um, you know, you, as a Muslim, you want to give things their right, okay? And so um, each day things can look a little bit different. You know, we could have a day where, you know, my child needs, um, you know, uh, a whole lot of my time. I can have a day where I literally spend, when my kids are at school, I will spend most of my day actually immersed in my studies. Or I can have a day where I'm like, you know, um, or a few days where I'm like, okay, no, I need to take care of my physical. I'm, I'm hitting the gym. This is, this is going to take the importance today. There's other days where it's like meal planning, prepping, all that stuff, subhanAllah. So I guess for me, it's really just uh, constantly checking in with myself. Am I giving things their rights? Am I giving my husband his right? Am I, am I giving my children their rights, subhanAllah? So yeah. you, you, the idea of balance is not a thing that you both try to have in the household. It's like you, have to, you understand that every week might be different. Yeah, and look, you know, we, we check in with each other a lot and we work very well together, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah right? Um, so checking in is very important with your spouse, having that open communication. If something feels a little bit off, you know, maybe have that discussion. But at a time that is appropriate, you know, not at a time where it's like, you know, I'm immersed in something or he's completely immersed in something. You've got to find these right moments, right? SubhanAllah. So I also, like, I like how you said that you guys check in often. Mm. I admire that a lot. I think, what about in terms of, like, with parents checking in because obviously you don't want to bring these things up as well with your parents because maybe they're not comfortable if you're bringing it up. You're not saying the words check in, but you're kind of being too forward sometimes with certain parents they can maybe make it a bit awkward or they overthink about the situation right. how is it in terms of like yourself or people you know that you deal with their relationship with, with their parents over time um well it's interesting subhanallah our parents have some pretty big rights on us in islam we know that right um and look it, it's very important to check in um you know irrespective of currently what your relationship is like um, you know, we've got lots and lots of people coming out now saying, you know, uh, my I don't have a great relationship with my mother, I don't have a great relationship with my father, um, you know, they treated me so badly and they keep abusing me or whatnot, you know, can I cut these ties? And the simple answer is no, you cannot cut ties. Um, but, you know, what it comes back to is you maintaining maintaining this Islamic character and doing what's right by God, you know, giving people their right. So it's of your parents' rights that you actually do check in on them. You can still place boundaries. You can absolutely do this, subhanAllah. But, you know, healthy boundaries without breaking their heart. 
And, you know, it takes a level of emotional intelligence to be able to kind of do this as well. Yeah. You know what I mean? And in finding those right times uh, where you can, you know, um, I guess maybe uh, have particular conversations with your parents or when, you know, it's, it's not the right time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I find it interesting, like, not just with myself, but I noticed even speaking to my friends recently because they're married as well. But then it's gotten to a stage where um, obviously the kids get older, the kids get married, they move outside the house and then they're looking for... They're, they're yearning more for like spending quality time with their kids but then as well they're still at the same time creating their own life so it's like finding that balance or that middle ground is not as easy I assume like I'd still live at home but then yep. I'm yep. still seeing the next chapter and what it could be and how yes, to work around yes, that yes absolutely absolutely yeah. you know sometimes I think it's it's a matter of sitting down with your actual spouse and trying to um, see what's going to work for you guys as a family and try to come to some type of, uh, of arrangement. You know, for some couples, they say, okay, well, Sunday is family day and we're literally going to both go and check in on, on our parents, you know, and the parents are then made aware of this. They know this, there's an expectation. And so then there is no reason to feel that guilt during the week. You obviously still, you know, call and check in on them, but this works for some couples. And I think, you know, the way that we're living today with, you know, both couples working and whatnot, um, it's a really great solution to be able to carve out some time for them. Yeah. How does the balance uh, work with goal setting? Because sometimes you, when, you're, when you're focused on one major goal, your life goes out of balance, but then sometimes you're just going from the next goal to the next goal to the next goal. And it's not really like, you know, one month out of every four months I'm out of whack. It's every month. When you just keep going towards a bigger goal, things only get busier. Yeah. How do you kind of like try to set a standard where it's like, okay, most weeks we try to keep it calm. And yeah. there's busier periods. Like, do you guys yeah, kind of yeah, speak yeah. about that? Like, yeah. I I feel like I went through a phase like that where I was literally uh, kicking a lot of goals for the Muslim mindset, and I was really, really, really busy. Subhanallah. And one thing that I found uh, that really helped me a lot was, um, you know, where was my focus at? What was my intention? And these are the things a lot of the times people don't tend to think about. You know, our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, whoever focuses on the hereafter, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, he places a contentment in his heart. He rectifies all of his affairs and the dunya inevit inevitably comes to him, right? So when you factor this in, SubhanAllah, when I look back and I reflect on that time, I say, my focus was on my hereafter and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala literally took care of my dunya. He took care of my dunya, even to the point where I remember once um, Ali noticed how busy I was, right? And he'd say to me every now and again, you know, the kids, the kids, are the kids falling short? And alhamdulillah, the kids weren't falling short, right? Until one night, I remember I was exhausted. I put them to bed. We tend to get them into bed just before seven. Got, got them into bed and my girl said, mum, can you um, lay with us for a little bit? I said, yeah, okay, I could do that. So I got into bed and I was exhausted. I fell asleep. And I wake up to uh, my five-year-old girl teaching my three-year-old girl how to uh, recite Surah the nas And for me, I just went, you know, that's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? And that for me was my answer. It was at a time where I was really questioning myself because Ali was questioning me. And subhanAllah, it's just like for me, I'm like, you know, when you really focus on your hereafter, if whatever you're doing in the dunya is for your hereafter and, ev and almost everything can be, he takes care of it. He takes care of it, subhanAllah. How do you question each other without going too far? You know what I mean? Like the other person can easily get offended because, you know, you understand that it's a busier period. It's like, yeah. and you kind of say, you know, it's busy at work, family yeah. stress. How do you kind of like... Uh, I think there's got to be priority. You know, like you're a prioritised. This is my opinion. You know, I, I'm the breadwinner. I've got to support. I've got to, you know, like I do my hours at work. You come home. There needs to be a there needs to be a buffer period where you just a sense of calmness. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, and uh, I think that's really important because you know work hasn't finished. You know you got you got to give time to what's really important. Yeah, so the kids the kids need kids need presence, physical presence, not the gifts. Absolutely. Yeah, and obviously you got to give hut to the wife as well. So. You know, um, for me, the priority, the, I, and I said this to Nina from day dot, the, the priority, I don't need you to work. And I said this to her. Mm. I said, if I have to work two jobs 
to support. I'll do two jobs. I don't need you to work. I was like, where's the paper to sign? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, uh, like, and, and, and subhanAllah, <laughs> it was like, for me, the priority is raising the kids. If her work blows up to the point where there's neglect in the household and the kids, put that aside. I don't, I don't me personally, I don't need it. Yeah. My kids are a, a, a manner. Yeah, so, you know, and we know, I don't know if this is an Islamic teaching or or in Arabic culture, it's, it's a, an M. Uh, he madrasa, like the mother is the the school of the, ki- you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So and not to say that the father doesn't have a role, you know, but this is my priority, mm. you know. And obviously, there's gonna this this time, there's windows where she can do her work. Yeah. You know, especially now they they under seven and under, they they need the mother, mm. yeah. They need the, they need the parents. Yeah. You know? After that, they're in school. They Once can, they yeah. get to school, she's 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 not gonna know what to do with her time. Yeah. But I'm sure she'll be productive. You know, there's a, there's a lot of work to do. There's there, there is we're, a we're lot here, of work to we're do. we're here for a purpose. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there's no there's no you know. Yes, you you socialize here and there, but I'm not having a uh, like a supriya or, or a morning you know coffee either. every morning <laughs> at my house. Or, so, you know, <laughs> we're, we're only here for a short time. How do you guys find? Um, how do you guys push each other for excellence? Because sometimes, like you know, if uh, we say we say Nina's having a bad day, it's hard to motivate the other person to be like, you know, like, you know, Keep get up pushing. off the couch, yeah. Keep like pushing. you know, your sheikh said at the start, like he pushed you. Mm. It's like yeah. even that mindset, like uh, there's not a lot of I'll say like my sisters and my mum w- don't get pushed like that. Mm-hmm. Like come on, don't be lazy, let's go. And then it's yeah. like nah, there, there has to yeah. be internal motivation. So how do you both balance? Uh, how do you both motivate each other? Achieve each other's goals because you have to hold each other accountable. Hundred percent. I think we're kind of self motivated though. Like I don't yeah. look to him to get my motivation, and he doesn't look to me. We're both like, are we feel? Are we fulfilling each other's rights? Because we're both accountable. He knows he's accountable for looking after me, for instance. I know I'm accountable to being this obedient wife. Subhanallah. And this is why we do check in. This is why we do, and, and and we do it often. Like, and we do it in in such a way. I don't know. It just becomes very. Um, it just seems very natural, mm. just to see once you how know, he's doing. Yeah, once you yeah. know your role in the relationship, mm. you know. Um, Is I that something that's always been there? Because obviously now you're a bit older and you know more mature. You've been married yeah. ten years, but for those people that you know you give marriage advice to, the first yeah. couple of years, yeah. how did they set that standard? So you know when we when we got engaged or when we met each other. Hola, chicos, cómo están? Okay, now I've got your attention. Pause the video. If you haven't subscribed, click the subscribe button and enjoy the rest of the video. Um, we were just like no BS. Everything on the table. We were over it. He met like half of Melbourne. I met half of Sydney. <laughs> we were just like, I just what is it? Come on, like, you know. So we kind of just didn't hold back. He said his expectations. I said mine. We're like, brilliant. And then we would just fire off questions. It wasn't like... I actually walked into it by myself, yeah. No, no parents, <laughs> no mucking around. Just and I love Can that. you give us some examples of like maybe the, some of those questions that were important that really yeah. set the standard or even... Like D- Dean was the first question. Okay. Obviously, do you pray? I mean, I had some background knowledge of who she was. So for me, that's what kind of... That's where I got my interest, you know, was going. So um, so for, uh, Dean is, is, is like your concrete slab. Yeah, and akhla, you can tend you can tend akhla, to pick this up yes. with yeah. someone like you know through by sitting with them and yeah through yeah. conversation. Yeah. Um, but also another way that um, I got a lot of insight into Ali's mind was you know I established this game with him called What If, and I used to give him random scenarios to be like you know what if you know one day I came home and X Y and Z, and then he would just tell me and because it was just a random scenario he would literally tell me how it was then he'd ask me. A question and we really got to know each other through this subhanallah and also you know just basically asking what does your perfect life look like at home when you're married what does that look like in your ideal world what does it look like you know do you what think it, this so do you think this mindset and ability to ask questions the no bs happened because you guys also got married earlier later yeah later i yes. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. later like yeah. a 19 year old and a 20 year old no different yeah. wavelength and Dif- also, you, you don't confident in who you are at that age. Yeah. yeah, I was like, without boasting, like I was, I know what I was bringing to the table. Yeah, I know who I am, um, and you know what you see is what you get. Yeah, 
Yeah. That, that, that comes with age. And most that 21 year olds aren't that no, confident that, in correct. themselves. 100%. Yeah. And, you know, it's, and subhanAllah, you know, it's uh, every, uh, what do they say? Uh, every every delay, there's there's goodness in it. Yeah. So, uh, alhamdulillah. Is now with, because now you guys help mar- uh, give advice to young married couples, marriage counselling. Do you... Marriage mentoring. Marriage mentoring. Men- okay, yeah. marriage mentoring. Yeah. Is there a thing where you s- tell people like it's not bad getting married later on? Because sometimes people think like, oh, I'm like, for example, Ali, uh, he's like, oh, you know, like if I don't get married now in the next two years, it might be like it's getting a bit late. Yeah, like you. So I'm, how old are you, Ali? I'm 26 now. 26. And of course, you go through phases where it's like, I want to get married, I want to get married. And then you can, in those phases, you think to yourself, like, oh, okay, I'm getting to a certain age. And all these thoughts are getting in your mind. I was 33 when I got married. Not sure typical not. for a Lebanese. Yeah, but way pa- past the expired. way past due date. You give me time to breathe. That's good, bro. <laughs> Appreciate it. You know, it's uh, but subhanallah. I know what I wanted, and I wasn't willing to to um, what's the word I'm looking for? Sacrifice. Sacrifice. You know, yeah. interesting. Um, I, 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 you know, I, d- I did try, and I did get to know other sisters. Yeah, but subhanallah, it was like that sense of comfort never arrived. So yeah. would you encourage people to keep looking? I inc- of course. That's something yeah, or some course. people are like, oh, I just you gotta take strive. Their best it's like thing. any goal. Mm. Yeah, any goal you set. Yeah. You know, and, and I say this without like making it sound like a commodity, but this is an investment. This is a lifelong investment. Mm. Yeah, so um, you know, it's 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 not always gonna be yeah, skyrocketing. It's true. Like I've ha- I've had my like situations as well where I thought to myself, Oh, like, you know, this isn't that bad. You know, I can I can live with this because in the moment as well, like emotions start to come in, and also excite general excitement yes. because it's pretty natural to get excited about marriage and whatnot. But then when I think I give it time, then I think about it like, hang on, maybe not. Maybe this isn't the best situation. Or maybe I need some more time, or even keep looking per se. I say Allah Allah knows when the right time is. Yeah. yeah? So as long as you're doing your part. And Allah's always on time. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. a good one. Yeah. <laughs> so with your marriage mentorship, what um, what are the main things people come to you guys for? Oh, not so me. So it's not just me. it's just, just not me. yet. No. You're like the next po- yet. my next podcast. Like, next podcast, like, <laughs> all the boys are calling me. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Um, there's a very big emphasis on you know communication. Um, and uh, conflict resolution and conflict management. Uh, there's a very big emphasis on um, really knowing yourself as a couple, right? Knowing yourselves individually and then knowing yourselves as a couple. And there is this assessment that you actually uh, go through. It's about 30 minutes worth of all of these very um, intricate questions um, that will spit out this report that will make you go, oh, wow. <laughs> so, uh, subhanAllah, um, the... Mentorship program probably takes only about four sessions um, and it's pretty much based on uh, the needs of um, the mentees, right? So it could be a young couple that are either just engaged or they've been up to seven years married. And so what, what the aim is that we teach them the prophetic, um, the prophetic uh, way of marriage and that happens through an online course and then you get four sessions with myself that goes through um, how you are as a couple and um, really trying to teach you the tools on how to make this a successful relationship. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. And for young couples, do you see there's a lot of um, issues with like when there's interracial? Because now that's very common in our community with interracial marriages. Is that a thing where there's... uh, a lot of misunderstandings of how the marriage is going to work. Yes, absolutely. Do you see that a lot? That can happen, yes, okay. absolutely. And subhanAllah, you know, part of this program is actually trying uh, is trying to learn more about your families and your family history and the family background, right? SubhanAllah, even like when it comes to, you know, attachment styles and whatnot. So then once you have this intel, you have a better understanding of who your partner is and what their family is like and, and how to kind of deal with that. And then, you know, the communication tools, kind of help you through that as well yeah. you know navigate that beautiful yeah. uh maybe i'll touch on i uh, had a couple more questions i wanted to go through i asked before the podcast about um if you had the potential to run a curriculum for a group of girls we'll say like 
uh, maybe just just finished high school. Yeah. Like that age group, you could run a curriculum for a twelve month course. What would you uh, prioritize in that curriculum for young sisters? I'd go one of two ways, or maybe incorporate these two. I would teach them emotional intelligence, or I'll try to teach them emotional intelligence. Right. And emotional intelligence is about, um, I guess, uh, trying to read the room, trying to learn the emotions of, of the person that you're dealing with. Right. So you can be more of an influence. You can have more impact. Right. Have better relationships. That's one thing I believe needs to be taught. Right. You know how to have empathy. Subhanallah. A lot of these days you, you don't see it. And empathy is something that's actually taught. Subhanallah. And our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he had emotional intelligence and you look at the success that he had subhanallah you know when is it came maybe, to is there maybe like a book or podcast or a way people can learn more about emotional intelligence that you might recommend um you have videos on it on your own account I've, sometimes I've, people just say i have yeah. emotional intelligence but they yeah. haven't really assessed yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. i um i actually put together um like a short course and i had run that with i think it was isra at the time with Sheikh uh wasama um so there are a few different resources, a few different resources. But, you know, generally, just look up emotional intelligence. You'll be able to see a lot of resources there. And a lot of them would be on the money as well. Mm-hmm. There's one um, There's one by, I think his name is Sheikh Mikhail. Michaela Ahmed Smith. That's the one. That one, yes. with the heart in mind. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's a good one too. That's a good one. Yeah. I'm really bad with names. That's okay. Um, alhamdulillah. But alhamdulillah. So that's number one, emotional yeah. intelligence. So it'd be number- emotional intelligence. But also, I'd love to fuse that with, um, you know, purpose, being a purposeful in- individual and really teaching um, uh, the, the young woman about, you know, I guess setting out or having this trajectory of her life. What does this look like for her? But keeping in mind uh, this long journey we have of the hereafter and not just be frivolous in your decisions, right? Just to be very um, almost calculated in, in the things that you, uh, I guess, go for or pursue, right? Because once we learn what our purpose is, is here in this dunya and we learn about the long journey we have ahead of us, things really change up in terms of what you end up selecting for yourself and what you don't, right? Because everything, essentially every single decision is going to have a big impact. Yeah. How do you guide people to find their purpose? Because even you, you might say, Muslim mindset, I feel like this is why I was here. But you only started this journey maybe 15 years after high school mm. or 10 years after high school. There's a bit of a gap. Yeah. And a lot of times people finish high school and they're 21 and they're like, what's my purpose? I don't know. But they only really find out maybe later on. SubhanAllah. Look, I believe nothing is haphazard. And I believed I started my journey uh, in high school. And yeah. I myself, I was very up and down. I work with youth because I realize of how much a, a, of a hard time being a youth is, right? With battling all your hormones and the rebellion and whatnot, right? I, I put my, my parents through quite a bit, <laughs> subhanAllah. And I believe that, you know, all of that, there were so many lessons I had to learn. Like, you know, I was very corporate driven, was very, very driven, subhanAllah. I myself hated hijab. I didn't want a bar of it, right? SubhanAllah. And, you know... Throughout all of these lessons that I've learned, throughout that particular journey, I look back and I say everything that I went through is, is to be utilised within the Muslim mindset. That wasn't haphazard, right? And, you know, we obviously look back and you repent, but I'm so grateful for my journey because, subhanAllah, all of the ups and downs, all of the trials, all the lessons, and I didn't particularly have it easy. Like my father passed away as soon as I got out of high school. Like it was really hard. I felt like my my security left. I have to work, you know, I had to put uni on hold. And it was just, you know, dealing with life. And I feel like I'm just fresh out of high school, subhanAllah. Mm. But, you know, all of these things, I look back and I go, um, this was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guiding me to this. And in the very same way, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is guiding every single individual in their own journey. Right, everyone has their own journey, subhanallah. But the, I guess, the crux of it is that how do we connect? How do we connect back to Him? And this is what life's journey is all about: just coming back to Him. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. Right, and that's exactly what He said. Once you actually leave this earth, subhanallah. So it's all about connecting. What do you say to um, the sisters who are very career driven, like you were in your twenties? Yep. Because I've read there's so many studies on people that delay marriage and delay having kids 
to focus on their career yeah. and then later on unfortunately they don't have kids don't have that family and they end up I uh, will say some of yeah. them end up not as happy and they're like I wish I didn't focus as much on my career mm. and I wish I focused on starting a family. Yeah, subhanallah. Look, sometimes I question whether or not this was the full intention of of the girls that are focusing on their career. Like for me, for instance, when I look back and I was very focused on my career, but I was very open to marriage at the same time. I just wasn't meeting the right person. And so what did I have in front of me? I had my career to focus on. And that's literally, that was that that was my path. Okay, subhanAllah. So um, I don't know. I I don't necessarily think that a lot of girls are just completely putting it on hold so they can finish their career and they can get, you know, to a director level or whatnot. Mm. But subhanAllah, you know, I think we need to kind of revert back and and trust the creator in his timing for us, in his timing for things. Because I think it's fantastic if the girls, if the sisters um, have something to focus on rather than, going into these group gatherings and it just being a backbiting session and a look what she's wearing and I'm going to focus on my outfit and, and all of these other things, right? SubhanAllah. Mm. Yeah. However, like even with uh, Allah's planning is the best planning, we all agree on that. Yeah. You still have to take uh, initiative yourself. Yep. You still have to go to events or go yep. around or try to yep. chat with people. And sometimes people have bad experiences with Getting mm-hmm. to know someone who puts them off. Yeah. Like, I don't want to go through that again. They got yeah. their heart broken, their yeah. family, someone disappointed them, mm-hmm. someone in the community. So they try to stay away from it because it's easier to stay away and not face the problem. So that's maybe sometimes why. Mm-hmm. But it's still a very common thing where sisters are career, career, career. Okay. Do you see uh, maybe like older sisters who pushed off marriage are maybe like less happy? Do you ever get those kind of encounters where people are like, you know, I'm, I don't know if I can get married or even have kids at this age right and I just focused on my career in my 20s and that yeah I guess it depends where the focus is because you know just as you can look at a woman or a girl that's really pursued her career and she's done well in her career looking at you know maybe the fact that she doesn't have a family she doesn't have children you could very easily use that same uh, scenario for a woman that has gotten married very early has a few children has a husband and is looking back at her life going oh well I never really got educated or I never really pursued my career and I feel like my cup is empty because of it you know I think it happens both both ways you know perspective yeah Yeah. Uh, okay I was gonna say I think another thing that goes both ways as well I wanted to get your opinion Mm -hmm. of is also um you could say overachieving in a way but then also setting maybe unrealistic high standard of Mm -hmm. the person you're looking for yeah like yes we can be patient and like wait for the right person to come but then of course you can't be doing that forever yeah so do you get any people like this? Do you deal with any people that set these kind of unrealistic standards? Unrealistic or? standards. Um, look, I, I think it's good to have standards and I think it's good to know um, what you feel might be good for you. But ultimately, you know, I would never um, encourage a person to not meet with another, you know, bachelor or bachelorette because they don't meet these particular standards because they in themselves might be exactly what you need to be successful, subhanAllah, right? And, you know, we see this at times. Sometimes you see couples where you go, I would have never have matched him with her or, or her with him. But subhanAllah, they really make it work and they complement each other, right? And so this is where the miracle of Allah's planning comes in, right? So I would, I would say if you get an opportunity to meet um, a particular sister, go and meet the sister. There is no harm. Right, because Subhanallah, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, He's the controller of hearts. He might open your heart up to it, and it might be something that's very blessed for you. Okay. Yeah. How about you, Ali? Have you thought the same thing with uh, if you could have a curriculum or you could have a way to teach kids for a period of time? What's those things you'd want to teach young males? Um, I think for as a male, work ethic is very important. You know, embracing hard work, em- embracing the grind. Um, not not kind of succumbing when that comes their way, you know, not folding. Um, I mean, that comes from my sporting background. Um, look, uh, we're here for a purpose, you know, so Din needs to be – he always, always needs to come back to Din as well, yeah? So I think uh, if I was to have a curriculum, you'd definitely have to have, you know, Din. I mean, for me, I think – you can almost uh, combine 
uh, teachings within the religion and health and fitness and training, you can always bring them together. There's a lot of examples. And me as an individual, I think people will resonate to that. You know, I, I got inspired more when I found Rasulullah was wrestled. Yeah? And, and, and his caliber of wrestling. And then another companion. And another, comp- you know, so I was like, wow, this is, this is you know, for me that inspired me. That, that gave me another uh, injection of inspiration. Mm-hmm. You know, so I think me as an in- individual, Ali Abdo, I think I definitely have, you know, uh, um, Islamic principles intertwined with uh, health, fitness, strength, yeah. work ethic. With working hard, there's a big movement around like work smart, not hard. Uh, 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 so but, still, but still, but still, but still, at first you have to work hard. Mm. Nothing's going to come easy. Like if I, if I, if I want to, if I want to sit back and relax and earn, for instance, example, passive income and not work 40 hours a week, there's a moment in time where I will have to work hard. It's not going to just, Come out of thin air, yeah. So, and I think, yeah, definitely works. My, I mean, it's like wrestling, yeah. Initially, my first 10, 15 years of, I had to work hard. But now, put me on the mat, I might not have the conditioning, but I got the efficiency. Mm. Yeah. So, I don't have to work as hard. I don't have to work as hard as you who hasn't wrestled before, yeah. yeah. Mm. So, I think, though, like maybe it's a male ego thing, but nine out of 10 guys you asked them like I'm a hard worker yes guy. 100% you know? and yeah. then not, like I see guys that go like I have a high pain tolerance and then something happens and I'm like obviously you don't like I'm not even, I wouldn't even say I'm the most hard working guy I'd say I'm hard working but I know there's more hard working people because like for example you even in the morning workouts yep. that's something I say I want to do yes. and then I slack off and I go for that 9am workout you yep. know what I mean like I, I know yeah, I'm but not there's, this not, there's, no, there's no reason for you not to do it at 9 you know, there's no reason for you to wake up at maybe six to do it at six. For me, I, I used to always train in the evening. But because my lifestyle changed, mm. my responsibilities changed, now I'm forced to train at six in the morning. But even the idea that sticking to what you say you're going to do. Yes. That's what a, that's what a hardworking yeah, man yeah, does. Yes. If you say you're going to do 6 a.m., yeah. why are you going to sleep every day after Fajr? Yes. Yeah, that's that's yeah, literally yeah. like being undisciplined. And yes. that's more of what it is. Discipline, yes. But it's that's what nine out of ten guys say, I'm a hardworking guy. And I, what... Uh, Things you measure like hard working is it like being in fitness, like being able to push yourself? Is that just every, work, I, I, every I, I, area? Look, I mean, for me, for me, working hard or being a hard worker is, um, you know, commitment to my to my uh, exercise, for instance. Um, and when I put in the work, and there's never, it's not always hard. Go 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 go. Yeah, there's you know the the intensity. Of, uh, fluctuates but I definitely put in the work you know if I've got one arm injured I'm still going to put in the work 75% of my body is still able so I'm, st- I'm still going to put in the work yeah so um, you know when it comes to work I'm going to I'm going to give my 100% within my work in my line of work you know um, it's not always going to be 100% but I have a duty of care you're so always going to give it your all, whatever you got. You got, got it, you're 100%. And it's not like, oh, i got to give it my all, you're going to see me sweat, you know, in my line of work, you know, but in the gym, I don't feel like I've worked if I'm not breaking a sweat. Oh. You know what I mean? Is that just for wrestling or in general? Any, anything, anything at the gym? Any, any, anything. If I'm exercising, if the purpose is exercising, getting stronger, getting fitter. And you're a big kettlebell guy, aren't you? Oh, uh, look, no, I go through phases. Like I like my kettlebells. I like okay. traditional exercise. I don't, I don't need any fancy kind of... So you're not uh, kettlebell or dumbbell for you, like? I uh, may. If I had to choose one, yeah. I'd go kettlebell. Okay. Yeah, more functional. Interesting. Yeah. Better take you. Th- you need to take us to a workout. Oh, now. look, I'm not. <laughs> no, no. I, I don't think I have the expertise when, in that domain, but yeah. We can always learn one of. Inshallah. Oh, I'm sure I can learn of you guys too. Yeah. Inshallah, we'll see. Hey, we're gonna open the door for you and you. Do uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I will touch on one last thing, hopefully, um, for sisters that want to take a step to improve. Um, but the spiritual, <laughs> physical, mental health, what are the steps you um, encourage them to do? Like some takeaway action steps, inshallah, for the sisters to benefit. Sure. Um, I would um, I'd probably encourage them to make a sound intention. That's the biggest thing. Because once we make an intention, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala facilitates and opens doors, right? And I think this a lot of the time is, is, is discounted. Make this intention and then go ahead and make a plan. 
And if they're in, in need of a mentor, and I'd encourage you know to probably get one if if this is actually what you're looking for, um, you can knock on my door any day, inshallah. Alhamdulillah. Where can the yeah. sisters find you? Uh, the Muslim Mindset on Instagram. I've got a uh, website, um, themuslimamindset.com, um, and Facebook, Nina Fashik. Beautiful. Yeah. Jazakallah khairan. Jazakallah khairan. Well, thank you very much for both of you coming on the thank episode. You so much. I think everyone uh, would have loved the episode and benefited a lot. We inshallah. really, really appreciate it. It means a lot to us. Inshallah. And inshallah, we can have you guys on again. Inshallah. Thank you very Jazakallah much. Khair. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. See you next week.